Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Nepal ratifies controversial $500 million US grant. African migrants face racism at Ukraine-Poland border. 33 Colombian social leaders killed in 2022. And Sudan's resistance committees present political charter. In our first story, Nepal's parliament has ratified a controversial $500 million grant by the United States. The country has signed the U.S. government's Millennium Challenge Corporation, or MCC, pact in 2017. The deal's stated purpose was to provide funds for infrastructure projects, including power transmission lines and roads. The pact sparked protests in Nepal, which were met with heavy repression. Communist parties within Prime Minister Duba's ruling coalition rejected the pact, arguing that it would undermine Nepal's sovereignty. La Via Campesina also condemned the pact as an instrument of new types imperialism to pursue economic hegemony. It added that the pact would threaten food sovereignty, self-determination, political freedom and peace. Experts have argued that it is part of America's Indo-Pacific strategy. They have pointed to MCC's links to the U.S. military and the possibility of the entry of troops in Nepal. Local media reported that U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Donald Liu had urged Nepali politicians to endorse the pact by February 28. If not, Liu said that the U.S. would review its ties with Nepal. The MCC pact was finally ratified after a compromise with the Communist Party of Nepal Maoist Center and the CPN Unified Socialist and the JSP. The grant agreement now includes an interpretative declaration which stipulates that Nepal will not become a part of any strategic military or security alliance with the United States, including the Indo-Pacific strategy. In our next story, the United Nations Refugee Agency has stated that more than 500,000 people have fled since the start of the war in Ukraine. The agency's head, Filippo Grande, added that the number could reach up to 5 million. The announcement came as officials from Russia and Ukraine arrived in Belarus to meet for crucial negotiations. More than 115,000 refugees, most of whom are women and children, have already crossed the border into Poland. Ukraine closed its airspace to civilian flights, forcing many to walk on foot to reach the border. However, African and other non-white migrants trying to flee to safety have described racism and discrimination at the border. Ukrainian police and border forces have reportedly blocked migrants from boarding trains and even pointed guns at them. A man told the Independent that he, is his family and several other people were ordered to disembark from the bus after being told no blacks. People who have been left stranded have taken to social media to share their testimonies. 24 Jamaican students who arrived in Lviv from Kharkiv on Saturday were forced to walk 24 kilometers to Poland on Sunday. Black people are struggling to board buses headed to Poland and have also been denied entry at the border. A student, Enze, also shared footage on social media which appeared to show Ukrainian forces threatening to shoot people. He also said that some African migrants had been waiting at the border for two days. People have been stranded without food and water in extremely cold weather. Next, we go to Colombia, which has recorded the deaths of at least 33 social leaders in 2022 so far. The Indepass confirmed the death of Gustavo Antonio Torres on February 26th. He was shot and killed by armed men in his home in the Tibu municipality. Torres had been forcibly displaced after the formation of the Caño Indio Productivo Association. The Ombudsman Office had already issued an alert on the presence of illegal armed groups, which social leaders classified as military objectives. Torres was killed a day after the murder of an indigenous guard and leader, Dilson Borja Domico, in Antioquia. He was killed in Turbo, which reportedly has the highest concentration of drug-related insecurity. The local community is also at a high risk of violence. Colombia was also rocked by the murders of two prominent peasant leaders last week, Teofilo Acuna 
and Jorge Tafur were killed in the municipality of San Martin on February 22nd. Both had been members of the National Agrarian Coordinator or CNA and the People's Congress and fought for the recovery of land. They had also condemned the San Martin police and mayor for harassing victims of violence in the community. Members of the People's Congresses have been increasingly targeted with threats and violence in their struggle for peace and human rights. Indepaz has estimated that 1,319 social leaders have been assassinated since the beginning of the peace accords in 2016. And finally, thousands of elderly people in Sudan held a Mother's and Father's March on February 26. The protest was held in support of the youth who have mobilized under resistance committees against the junta. Marches were held in the capital city as well as in states including Jazeera, Blue Nile and North Kordofan. At least 83 protesters have been killed and over 3,000 have been injured since the October coup. Chanting, our children are not alone, we stand with them, protesters marched in Khartoum on Saturday. At least 34 people were injured after security forces cracked down on the crowds. On February 27th, the Khartoum State Resistant Committees presented a proposal for the Charter for the Establishment of the People's Authority. It reiterates the rejection of negotiations with the military and the continuation of peaceful resistance. The text calls for the cancellation of the 2019 constitutional document and a review of all agreements since April 11th that year. It lays out a two-year transition under a prime minister chosen by the charter signatory. The text also proposes transitional governance structures based on a federal system. It includes mechanisms to prosecute those involved in rights violation and war crimes in 2019 and the crimes committed since the coup. The charter also includes proposals for lasting peace, the economy and development and foreign relations. It also includes reforms for the judicial system, the civil services and the military. The text also calls for a constitution-making national commission and popular participation in the drafting process. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.